Well, Fawa, Jim, thank you. Imagine being able to engineer your baby to filter out all possible problems and perhaps enhance its intelligence or athleticism or looks. Genetic manipulation is no longer just the stuff of science fiction. Tonight, correspondent Shannon Bream on the very real prospect and serious implications of designer babies. We should be, be careful to talk about these things and sort them out. In some respects, that is what the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, is doing during a two-day fact-finding symposium about controversial technology that would manipulate genetic material in order to create children with not two, but three genetic parents. The technology is aimed at assisting families at risk of passing along potentially fatal mitochondrial disease by taking the mother's faulty DNA material and replacing it with a healthy donors. If you can take a piece of that um, part of the DNA that's damaged and replace it with a new part, if you will, that comes from another human, uh, this is something that could really change uh, the, the whole view of, of diseases in the future. The problem is where do we stop? But the FDA isn't touching on that quandary, instead focusing on the science of the procedure rather than the moral questions attached to it. Scientific issues cannot be considered in isolation from their moral effects. Uh, uh, and we simply must take up the, the, the questions uh, in parallel to each other. Leading ethicists like Drs. Robert George and Donald Landry of the Witherspoon Council on Ethics and the Integrity of Science are urging the FDA to put the brakes on approving the technology, calling it, quote, reckless, and saying it would, quote, have the dubious distinction of being the first assisted reproduction technology necessarily to involve the deliberate destruction of human embryos. Others believe there is room for compromise on the heated issue. If you want to draw the line, you have to draw it in a different place. Not to say never genetically engineer an embryo or a baby, but we have to say only use it for diseases. If that's what we're going to say, I'm comfortable with that. But to say we're not going to do it at all and leave kids impaired or dying, that seems to me not the right ethical course. In the midst of what is arguably one of the most critical ethics debates of our time, some are asking why a key voice is missing. I want to know where is President Obama's Bioethics Council, led by President Amy Gutman of the University of Pennsylvania. They seem to be AWOL on this issue. We have reached out to the White House for comment from either the president or a member of the Bioethics Council. And so far, Brett, we have not gotten one. Okay, Shannon, thank you.